If you watched my shop tour video a few weeks ago, then you saw my Harbor Freight dust collector setup and heard me talking about the upgrades I had in store for it. Well now it's time for some modifications to turn that big rolling dust machine into this much smaller and easier to manage wall mounted unit. Check it out. The first thing I needed to do was to build a dust separator barrel. To do that, I just had to build a lid for a sturdy garbage can and incorporate some fittings I bought in a kit from Rockler. This kit is really easy to use and comes with instructions on how to build it. I started out by cutting a rough circle in some 3 quarter inch plywood on the bandsaw, then making a perfect circle using my router table. Be careful using this method, it's easy to do, but if you don't have a solid hold on the workpiece, the router will grab it and start it spinning in a big hurry. For my lid, I needed two circles, one the exact diameter of the opening of the garbage can, and one that was a bit bigger. I used the holes in the center of the circles to hold them together while I started marking things up. Before going any further, I pushed the lid onto the can to make sure that the smaller circle made a nice tight friction fit. If it isn't a tight fit, then you will lose some of your suction pressure. Then I flipped it over and traced the rim of the garbage can and the inner circle onto the larger circle. This shows me the exact rim of the can. Then back at the router table, I cleared out that space between those lines. At this point, I don't believe this step was that necessary, but my thinking at the time was I would create a channel to put some gasket material into and aid in making the lid airtight. Next, I marked out the locations for the holes where the plumbing and viewing window will go, and I drilled a small pilot hole through the center. Then I rejoined the small and big circles and used those pilot holes as guides to drill holes through the small circle as well. This keeps everything lined up perfectly without having to measure and mark both halves of the lid. The Rockler kit isn't designed to work with a lid this thick, so I can't just glue them together now and cut one hole. Instead, I have to cut two different sized holes, allowing the plumbing to clamp around just one thickness of plywood instead of two. You'll see what I mean in a minute. For this project, I needed to be able to cut four, five, and six inch holes. I figured the perfect solution would be this adjustable circle cutting jig I picked up. Now, either I really used it incorrectly, or the one I got was just junk, but I can honestly tell you I hated using this thing. It really worked my drill press hard and created a ton of smoke just to cut a few holes in plywood. On more than one occasion, the set screw came loose and the cutting blade jumped to a larger diameter and made a big mess. Knowing what I know now, I would have just skipped this thing and used a jigsaw instead. With all the holes cut out, I spread some glue around and clamped the two pieces of the lid together, still using a bolt through the center holes to keep everything aligned. Now you can see the stepped holes that this creates that allows the plumbing to work correctly. I used one of the plywood cutouts as a template to trace onto a sheet of plexiglass, then I cut it out using the bandsaw. This will become a viewing window that will allow me to see how full my bin is without having to take the lid off. Using some silicone glue, I pressed the window into the lid, then used some more glue on the inside to help hold it in place. The suction of the dust collector will be pulling in this direction, so there's a small chance that the window could get pulled out of its position. I should have made the stepped hole in the other direction. Then, using some more silicone to ensure a good seal, I secured the pipe fittings to the lid, and this part is ready to go. Next, I had to prepare the location that the dust collector would be mounted to. This window has always been wasted space, so I figured now was as good a time as any to cover it up. I took all the mounting hardware out of the base of the dust collection unit and disconnected the hoses. The motor and blower are the only parts I'm going to need now. And I'm going to measure that. Okay. I marked out and drilled mounting holes in some 2x4s that will act as vertical supports when this thing goes up on the wall. Are all of my boards three inches? Yeah. Oh, so you don't even need a tape measure anymore. Yeah. Then I set the motor and blower assembly in place and bolted it to the 2x4s. I flipped the whole thing over and set it on sawhorses so I could add some cross braces. 
I just used some pocket holes and some short pieces of wood from the back side so that everything would look clean once it was mounted on the wall. Then, resting the bottom of the frame on the foundation, I raised the whole assembly to the wall and screwed it to the studs. I had the foresight to put screws in the frame first, so I didn't have to mess with holding the frame and searching for screws all at the same time. Next, I figured out where I wanted the blower exhaust pipe to go through the wall, then used a really long drill bit to go all the way through to the outside so I could cut holes from both directions and have them line up correctly. Well here we go again with this lousy circle cutter. The packaging said it was good for cutting wood, plastic, and metal, yet I had a heck of a time getting it to go through drywall. So it shouldn't be any surprise that when I went outside to cut through the sheet metal, things didn't go well at all. It started out looking like it might actually work, then the set screw came loose and the diameter opened up again. Well, I reset the position, then tried a little more. Eventually, I realized that the cutting blade was completely trashed and gave up on it, deciding at long last to switch to my jigsaw. And even though I only had coarse wood blades on hand, I was able to get through the sheet metal and finish my cut, eventually. I put some silicone around the back of the vent in order to keep bugs and water out of the walls. Then I pushed it through the hole and secured it with some self-tapping screws. Back inside, I hooked up the exhaust port to the outside vent using some flexible tubing. At the blower end, I could use a hose clamp, but at the vent end there wasn't enough rigidity, so I just used some foil tape to seal it. Then, I put the lid on my garbage can and connected it to the dust collector. Well, so far this thing seems to be doing a really good job. In fact, it seems like the suction has actually improved over the old configuration. I don't have any good way to test that to give actual numbers, but uh, it seems to be the case. And my theory is that in the old configuration with that filter bag on top, Eventually the pores of that bag will get clogged with the fine dust particles and make it really hard for the air to get pushed out of the system. Well in this there's no restrictions like that. The air gets to flow freely through the pipes and into the separator where all the dust falls to the bottom and then the air gets exhausted straight outside through the wall. So from what I can tell, this, you can see that this barrel does a really good job of collecting the big chips and it looks like just a little bit of the finest dust does make it past this and goes outside, but that just gets caught in the wind and blown away anyway and never amounts to anything, and the neighbors are far enough away that it's just not a big deal. So really happy with that part of this. Now one thing you want to be aware of if you're going to do something like this and plumb the exhaust to the outside is that it moves a ton of air, and if you heat or cool your shop, it's going to move all of that hot or cold air outside in a matter of seconds. I actually tested it once when I had my air conditioner running all day and within about 10 seconds it went from comfortable in here to you couldn't even stand it because it was 95 degrees outside. Um, so that's a big concern. You don't want to run this if you're trying to control your atmosphere. Now living here in northwestern Wyoming, I would say six months out of the year, I work with the doors wide open anyway. The weather is just conducive to that. Um, winter time. I've got my fireplace in the corner and it gets so hot in here that I keep the doors partly open most of the winter too just so I don't cook myself out of here. The only real problem I have is in the summertime. For the last two months it's been in the 90s around here and <clears throat> my little window air conditioner can barely take the edge off of that and by the middle of the afternoon even if it's been running all day it's miserable. So <clears throat> any tool that makes a lot of dust and needs the dust collector. I run those first thing in the morning before it's hot outside and you know the atmosphere is fairly equalized between inside and outside. And then late in the day the air conditioner can't do the job anymore and it's just hot in here anyway so then I can fire it back up then. But through that middle part of the day where if I want to try to keep it tolerable in here I just make sure that I'm not running it and then I'm good to go. Well, I think that about covers everything. I'm really happy with how well this system is working now and how much less space it takes up. Another huge benefit is that I don't have to battle with that plastic bag full of dust anymore. With this, I just pop the lid off, 
take the bin out to the dumpster out back and we're good to go again. So anyway, thanks for checking it out. If you've got any questions about what I've done here, please leave me a comment and I will get right back to you on it as quickly as I can. Um, so anyway, thanks a lot guys. We'll see you next time.